Aries, welcome. This is your heart spread reading. Do something different this week. And we call this a timeless read. And really, I do the heart spread, but read um, personal energy, your energy, uh, with your own anima and your own animus. If you're not familiar, um, the Freudian, uh, not Freudian, boo, no, <laughs> Jungian <laughs> concept. Um, and this is where we project our divine feminine aspect as a man and, or our divine masculine aspect or however which way it works no judgment so but we project kind of what we want what we perceive maybe that we don't have and I think um, you know Freud said anything project anything unconscious becomes projected and we call it fate so um, if we find ourselves in certain types of relationships as astrology you, you'll see that on that first house seventh house axis which is kind of where this reading starts you know Anyway, with us looking at our anima animus, we are really going to look at our anima animus, uh, the, the part of us, you know. Um, I, it, For me, it was late in my life before I really, I don't know why, like allowed myself to simply think about kind of what what is it physically about a woman that most like turns me on. And it turns out I'm true Sagittarius. <laughs> but, you know, why I wouldn't even allow myself to have that uh, thought, I don't know, but it's something about, you know, how we project our anima or animus, you know. And I think as we become more conscious and take more control, now we're talking about manifestation. And then uh, I would like to think the whole point of manifestation is with great thought and prayer and respect and grounding and intention, uh, we then kind of take control of the helm instead of just randomly things coming into our life to, you know, uh, match this unconscious energy that we're projecting now we're projecting you know, this conscious energy in into that seventh house uh, let's call it um, and bringing in if we're manifesting uh, our manifestation you know whether it's really uh, relationships or not at, uh, at this point so this is where we're at this page of Pentacles energy and this page of Pentacles is so sincere and so sweet looking <clears throat> I think you can take uh, here uh, earnest sincere um, so if anybody's cross watching for an Aries but there's any doubt um, about how earnest and sincere this Aries is about their spiritual path you know um, they're very serious and they're very sincere it implies a big commitment too even though it's a page to me, it applies like a full commitment, and it's like a communication. Um, it almost can feel to me like uh, you communicating. This is actually, I think, exactly what you're supposed to do, maybe out loud. You know, I am, you know, uh, healthy. I am strong. I am worthy. I am a, a good steward of resources. Uh, I am a master of my emotions. Um, um, kind of energy um, and it's kind of like perfectly assertive you know uh, with the page of Pentacles it's not overdoing it um, let's see where this goes now here we're looking at the projected anima animus look guys going from the page of Pentacles to the two of Pentacles this is a feeling with uh, whether it's an anima or animus of, of wanting this is kind of wanting the person to fulfill us, wanting the person to complete us. It's that energy. Now, I'm not one to, you know, shit on this and say, oh, it's a, you know, uh, toxic uh, energy, codependent energy. Um, it's how things work, you know. Um, <clears throat> but but you have, as an Aries, you know, you would think, right, Aries, the rap is fast and, you know, um, jump on something but this is an Aries it's uh, being in terms of your spirituality I don't think this really speaks to age you could be I'm 62 I mean it could be any age but you would be making a firm commitment a lot of us don't really find ourselves spiritually until we're older and we kind of goes in with the north nodes and the ascendant energy for a lot of us it takes a while to line it up but look at this rainbow too um you, you're also looking for someone to kind of wow you um, kind of energy. And somehow, it, I would get the feeling like you're, you're coming in, uh, Aries, always sincere, 
like really like just same way and I I'm in relationship with Aries I've had other Aries in my life and I, I love that I'm a Sagittarius I love that about Aries they don't beat around the bush usually they're just like coming in and telling you exactly what they want really going for it um, but this is but the latest kind of a more thoughtful slow moving Aries uh, energy is at least around how you're think about manifestation spirituality a little bit like I have Taurus in the ninth house a little bit of that energy um, the ninth house of belief systems, you know, and religion and belief is the main thing. Um, and so you, you're looking for someone to kind of wow you and that's going to be like your other half. I mean, you might be using the word, oh, I want my other half, my other half. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I got to tell you, there's an emphasis here on, uh, material things and not, I'm not really saying that like as a put down, oh, you. You know, you like your material things, like chai tea. Uh -huh. That's a neat excuse to have a sip, so it's so good. Um, you know, and you like your nice cars. It's not uh, like that. It's like you're wanting something solid, you know, um, and you're willing to work for it. I see the two of, uh, pinnacles a lot, too, as this energy of really kind of working your, through your day almost like a six house here, just working through the day, doing the good work, keeping the ball rolling. Uh, it takes a lot of energy. It's a lot of personal energy. So it gives you an idea of kind of where you're going. Um, like for instance, so you're, you're really not looking for flash and sex appeal and bang and loud um, and that kind of thing. You're looking for steady and reliable and solid and real and grounded energy, you know? So, you know, you would be mostly drawn to earth energy. So what does that mean? So you have the earth house uh, in your second, uh, in, in your um, uh, uh, fifth with Virgo, um, in your 10th house. So anywhere in there, there could be some, that's called an issue, there's something in there and not, I don't think it's necessarily bad. Like relationships, how we learn kind of indicates how we're drawn to something. Why? But, you know, it could just be as simple as you don't have a lot of plants in those earth uh, signs, uh, earth houses. And so you don't have a lot of energy going into that area of life that has to do with your earth houses. Your, uh, what are you admiring? This is kind of brings that well-balanced. Someone has a well-balanced life, takes care of business is adulting mature responsible type of person it's kind of got things under control and i think you're really drawn to that and i'm not saying that like it's a bad thing it's like that's just kind of where, what gets you blows your skirt up you know um they come in with a bunch of crap they could come in with a wave and a fiery stick or you know uh with a big sob story but mostly you want them to come in like solid um it feels too like it could be any earth sign but virgo uh, comes to mind a lot so also look at where virgo is in, in your chart which depends on your rising guys now we're looking at your energy seven of pentacles this is how you're feeling consciously okay i'm going to look at this as you consciously how you're feeling about this relationship you have with your anima animus and, and, and so or where you're at with that relationship. And this says to me, now you're a page of pentacles. You, you've been really thinking about it, okay? You're not messing around. You're someone, you're manifesting here, Aries. You're making a list, you know? You're saying like, and like me, it's like, I, I want a woman with some hips, you know? And I want, you know, someone, this and that. It's like allowing yourself to get really specific. And, you know, you want somebody you get along with. How so? Put it down, you know? I want somebody that pushes back a little bit so they're not boring. I want somebody that's, you know, receptive and uh, caring and this kind of thing. Um, and that's the seven of pentacles energy, just really getting down to the nuts and bolts of it. Um, it's quite a Aries. You must have some Capricorn, your chart, uh, Aries. Significant Capricorn. Now... <clears throat> I'm going to call this a problem, this is kind of some unconscious energy, because now we're getting down to manifestation, and this seven of pentacles got manifestation written all over it, that's checking the boxes and everything, um, 
But now we're coming in here, and I'm gonna look at this. I said this kind of like your conscious inch, uh, self, your intentions, your conscious intentions. This is kind of the unconscious, the blowback, the things that are coming out at you. And so I think, like with the Queen of Wands, you know, you're looking for this kind of just balanced man, balanced woman, who's kind of simple and the girl, boy next door, and you're getting ginger from Gilligan's Island. You're rolling up the river that way. But you're, you're getting the sexy one, you know, a lot of fire. And um, I don't think you really, you know, this is kind of, you're manifesting this because um, you're weak in this area of the earth energy. Um, and by strengthening that, you know, you'll be able to uh, take control of your manifestation, manifest what you want. And you could probably still will manifest an earth person. I just think it's strong in you, you know. Sometimes once we take control, we realize we need a little fire in our life, you know. Um, so you have to ask yourself, too, like, why you keep getting the fire. It's not just about not getting what you want. It's getting something else. Well, maybe just because it's an earth house doesn't mean it's not where there needs to be action taken and confidence had, which is all this queen of wands energy. That's all in the unconscious. Um, you know, being too, uh, res being, this is being Aries. I mean, this is Aries. So, it's bringing that fire, whipping that fire out, guys. Six of Pentacles. Look at that coming under the Seven of Pentacles. I mean, I believe now this is a spirit's advice for you in terms of dealing here with your anima animus projections, okay? And this is the advice is to bring them into perfect balance and make them steady, make them real. It's coming up after the Seven of Pentacles in a Page of Pentacles. Uh, I think you're like primed to to manifest your ass off. You really got you're really solid here um, You just need to take off. You've got this energy this queen of wands. It's kind of like a Building it's in your unconscious your subconscious uh, It's why you keep getting in these, you know fast moving uh, Fire signs that just want to uh, blow your doors off, you know, maybe they do and you're kind of like not again now, this is a very interesting Wheel of Fortune here. I'm going to call this again over here now. You're unconscious because this is the anima anima. Now, if you are conscious, then you can you just interpret it that way. But the point here would be to take conscious control of it and begin to project over here what it is we actually want, you know, as an anima or an animus in our life. Again, I say, once you kind of really think about it, and uh, you do the work yourself some and everything, it's like maybe we find, you know, we, we thought we wanted somebody solid, and then we realize, no, we want that fire sign in our life. You know, we, we can deal with it. I mean, especially if you can deal with anything here, you're very solid. But this now, the Wheel of Fortune, that's Jupiter energy. That's your shit, you know, fire. It's Sagittarius. It's uh, exuberance, enthusiasm, um, you know, luck. Um, it also brings in the energy of the ninth house, you know, overseas travel, higher education, religion, belief systems, it's all about belief systems. So this is the universe saying to us, you know, and why not just believe as simple as that. And that's what Jupiter really says. Jupiter comes along and says, just believe, just believe, you know, um, and it, and it, it, Jupiter don't do well with seven of pentacles, you know, don't count the, the uh, what's that saying, you know, um, you, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth, you know, um, so this is, and also, there's kind of an energy here with the six of pentacles and the wheel of fortune, of, you know, not counting our problems, but counting our blessings, you know, I like counting there, actually, weighing things out, um, and this speaks to me, too, some kind of opportunity coming in. Look at Jupiter, like at 23, I think, 22. Um, Aquarius getting up down direct. It'll be moving into Pisces in early part of the year. It's going to be really rocking and rolling um, there. And that could definitely be speaking to some kind of uh, fortuitous transit, which could go so many different ways to you guys. Uh, Aries. Um, Depending on what you have in Aquarius, okay, and what you have in the 11th house even. So this is advice from spirit, guys. This is for the relationship as a whole normally, okay? And it's the crux of the heart spread. You see it taking form here. 
Um, and, you know, Spirit's not going to tell you to, or, you know, have a vicious fight with someone. I don't think, you know, um, I guess unless you didn't need to defend your life or something. Um, this is dealing here with your anima or animus. Um, I think what's involved is uh, there's some uh, disconnect between, I think, what you maybe think that you want, if I may suggest, and maybe what you want. And this is going to be rectifying that and rectifying it by um, integrating, uh, uh, determining, uh, realizing, changing something. Um, almost like, like if you were writing down um, your intention, say, and you have it all written down, you're real neat and or or orderly and organized, you know, you're a Virgo Libra guy or girl, <laughs> and uh, you might want to go in and add something or redo it, you know, or take something out, something quite literal like that, um, that may involve maybe some kind of difficulty. I mean, we're going from the seven to the six, it's like something's got to drop, you know, so this could be something having to come out of your life, and it seriously could be a thought pattern. You know, Five of Swords is well associated with negative thoughts, negative thought patterns. And now, um, as advice from Spirit, this is like in order to um, manifest and in order to have this true connection with their animal or animus, um, you know, it's going to take um, this difficult kind of conversation with ourselves here. Right. Put it other than that. Um, it's like something, and probably it's about uh, cut, cutting out something out of our lives, too. Um, and it could be a difficult conversation with a person, but I think, too, with this reading being for the anima animus, um, primarily it's going to be, uh, with this goes on within ourselves. Um, and I think as we cut out something, let me see what the outcome is here. Um, it's going to leave us with a different uh, ideal of what our anima and animus is to us. Maybe a more refined ideal and maybe the perfect ideal. Wow, you couldn't have a more amazing uh, finish. Thank you, Spirit, for this. Guys, girls, <laughs> check it. Ace of Cups as an outcome. And I said, you know, maybe what you're going to have is something real. And, and here you go. Um, so this, to me, means you will be prepared to project, as it were, your anima or animus in a completely pure and authentic way uh, that is genuine, has your best interests at heart. You're coming in with this page of pinnacles, um, and you'll be able to get what you want. And it comes over top of this five of swords. So uh, don't shy away to whatever this is that you probably have to let go of and something could like I say it could just be simple as letting go of negative thoughts you know um, I, I had the thought once you know I said uh, failure is like one of the few things uh, maybe the only thing besides me that's hung in here my whole life and I said I don't know if I want to sit with that so you know these are the kind of things like sometimes you you have to have a little tussle with yourself you know and it's true, like failures taught me a lot, but do I want to go around thinking that I'm a failure? No. <laughs> Although, you know, it has been a large part of my experience, you know. But I see this, how are you shake it, working through it here, and coming up with something pure and clear. I hope this helps a little bit uh, somehow. Do leave me a comment, guy. Guys, uh, like, uh, subscribe, please. I appreciate it. I'd like to get to 1,000. We're getting there. Um, so we could do these live. Thank you.